so then I'm I'm looking at so okay so now when you understand the stories of everything like everything is a story okay and then I'm looking at all the different photographs and the old documents you know if you go into the Vatican and they have all the different things that the esoteric knowledge esoteric knowledge is knowledge is just has been withheld from you that's all it is it's nothing that's that you don't already know in some form or another but you just haven't wrapped your mind around that you haven't been told everything and so i look at some of the old paintings from the renaissance renaissance period <laughs> or the golden age or even the 1800s let's say even way back in antiquity in the bc days okay so the thing with antiquity and modernity is that the logic and reasoning behind the dates and the timelines and logic and reasoning is not saying that that there is a well logic and reasoning is a logic that is used for the current time the reasoning is also part of the logic based upon the formula, the simulation. This is where I have to figure out how to explain logic and reasoning because people think that when someone is logical or they have common sense, they have better logic and reasoning and common sense than somebody else. No, it's just a different simulation based upon your biochemistry. And so when you are understanding the story behind numbers, which is in the Bible, because that's another story, that's, that's a logic and reasoning that has a beginning, middle, and ending, and then the generations and of people who live maybe less than a hundred years um, is what separates everyone. And so then it separates everyone and not having a relationship with certain things. But then you realize that even all of those different dates from generations ago have built in stories. And so then you think about Buddhism and Buddhism, I mean, Confucius and all the different, um, uh, leaders of their time have developed stories around their existence of the time. And so I'm watching this Netflix series called Madam Secretary and Taya Leone plays an excellent, you know, secretary of state. And then her husband is a theo theology and theology and whatever, a theologist. And he's, he's, very well versed in the stories of the different religions and then how do they mitigate against terrorism is they understand the extremists out there the right-wing extremists the left-wing extremists and a lot of these extremists are living the characters of a story and when someone lives a character of a story sometimes they go and try to act out the characters of the story because their mind thinks that they now have control over the story and want to accelerate the intentions of the story. And so then he has to go in. This is uh, Tim Daly, who's excellent in this, in this character. He has to go in and infiltrate and figure out how to speak to someone who is now going to commit some kind of terrorist act against a population and use his knowledge of the Bible or other things to then talk him out of developing um, uh, a huge event or allowing a huge event like a terrorist act to happen. And so that's when stories then turn into realities and you see people out there playing their parts. And so this is where then, this is where it's so hard to wrap your mind around because when you look at photographs, Okay, like from 1986, when the when there's picture of people, you know, milling about Chernobyl, and and it's a black and white photograph of 1986, and someone's like, "Wow, this looks really dated," but this is only like in 1986. It wasn't even that long ago. But when you take photographs or you do paintings, it, it, and there's already a perception of architecture of a time, of a wardrobe of the time 
of 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 even the 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 papyrus the parchment that is being used to be written on was a little bit different you know or during that time then you're like wow you know and 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 you, and you feel like you know you are having you know as a hand in history or feeling a touch of history but it's just like simulations that are that are being just you know simulations on top of simulations on top of simulations on top of simulations and that's really all history is it's just a bunch of simulations that have some connection to each other but there's different wardrobes there's different um oh god you know yeah well different wardrobes and and maybe different thought processes and you could say that that uh that they're not very advanced way back when well when you're constantly dying and reproducing in civilizations as well as humans it's like being reborn again and relearning how to freaking re it's like reinventing the wheel and so this this thing of history and history has been happening over and over and over again and so to and so then i have to really remind myself sometimes i get enamored and 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 um and marveling at things that that don't exist anymore like the like the aqueducts and i was in portugal and portugal almost it's in europe it's one of the oldest european civilizations actually it is the oldest european civilization civilizations is portugal and they have huge aqueducts like huge like i was when i was in my airbnb and i had a, a view of the whole of the whole city of lisbon and I see these aqueducts in the distance, and then and then Odd Stewart, who lives out there, is it Scotland? She I think she's Scottish or something like that, and in Dundee or something. And she lives near a bunch of aqueducts, and it's kind of cool that people do live next to things that were made in history when we were all doing things that are in an archaic way. But it, but but then I'm like, dude we've done this before this has been done before this is not new and i remember when i was a kid thinking like well first how does the world work what is money and i was thinking like where does money come from and that's when i was a kid and then i was thinking like and then i'm thinking like the last like maybe the last 40 years 30 years whatever i'm thinking like how do we advance so quickly from the 1800s from the civil war to then to this point where we're now we're able to talk on the phone and, and and do a virtual reality type of thing how do we advance that quickly and then you realize that yeah some there there this is a simulation it's been done before and when you have so many generations that are dying and reproducing then you have certain groups of people who've already been exposed to the same simulations and are told that, yeah, th you know what society is? It's one big story. And then all the think tanks, like the Rand Corporation, all these different think tanks, you know, the, the, the CIA and, and, and the Scotland Yard or, or the other place over there in, in, in England, it's another intelligence agency. They understand that humans live within stories. But then why do they have so many stories? Because it's a, it's a source of control. And it's not a bad thing per se, but you have to understand that you're living in a, you're living in a storyline. Okay, you are part of the storyline, and some people take their their parts and their characters so seriously, and then they merge in with the story. Before, first is a story that you read about, like the Illuminati. I'm like, oh my god, and that's what I that's what I was doing on the rabbit holes when I was on the truck with my husband, is I was going down the rabbit holes of the storylines of the Illuminati of all the different you know things that that, that the conspiracy world was talking about. And so then, then I started merging myself in with the story and then becoming an activist against the New World Order, against the storyline. Not going with the storyline saying, okay, you know, we need to see this, but no, then it becomes you taking a part in the storyline. And that's the same thing with politics. You have someone like Trump and someone like Biden that have their own backstories. Trump has a huge backstory. Of course he does. He's his father and and even the JFK, the, the Kennedy dynasty, huge storylines. I've been listening to those storylines for the last couple of days. Then I was listening to about, you know, 9-11. And 60 Minutes in Australia was doing a whole thing about 9-11. And that 
it's and, and some of these storylines are real. They they actually physically manifest in your world. And the weather is another storyline. Okay? And so this is where when you are unplugging from the matrix, I guess, if I want to be cliche, is realize that you are in a storyline and you can actively write in your contribution to redirect the storyline. So you have the framework of the Georgia Guidestones. So that's like the framework of the story. So when you think about writing a book, which I'm doing right now is writing a book, Okay, and there's a framework that we live in a simulation and you don't have to die someday. And you don't have to self-destruct and all this other stuff. And here's the science behind it. But in the overarching storyline that I am participating in, because I am part of the whole story, is that you have the Georgia Guidestones and here is the, the intended outcome. This is the mission statement. Like every single corporation has a mission statement. And then every department and every employee is contributing to the mission statement. And so the mission statement of humanity is the Georgia Guidestones. Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature and then all the other tenets behind it. Now, how are you going to manifest in that storyline is then your own story. And you can either be the ones to be uh, absorbed back into the universe, be recycled back into the universe, another storyline. Or you could survive this transition from one simulation to another. And you can appreciate the storylines and the wardrobe changes throughout periods of history. You can appreciate, like I, when I watch Netflix and I watch movies, I appreciate the storylines. There's some, like The Walking Dead. I couldn't keep my eyes off that, that show. And there's storylines around the drug cartels and the, the, the kingpins. There are storylines around the mob completely interesting storylines i mean yeah a lot of it has to do with death and it's like oh god i mean it's a little jolting when you think about some of the the aspects of the storylines because there's always has to be a demon there always has to be a good guy and a bad guy so the fbi and and all the different like rfk was the good guys right and then the mob were like the bad guys and they were committing atrocities and whatever but both sides commit atrocities either way and so then you have like the godfather and all the trilogy and all the different, you know, the different storylines and the offshoots and the spin-offs and, and the evolution of that storyline. And sometimes those storylines get exhausted. Then someone has to go and create a new storyline, which is the Galactic Federation. And so constantly, so, 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 so humans can still go to their job and do their job and mine for gold and push paper and, and do whatever. You got to give humans storylines to work with. Now, we have a new storyline called the immortality storyline of the Jilly Juice. The new storyline of the pain that you don't have, that pain doesn't have to kill you. You have to feed the pain, of course. You have to understand what it takes to survive the viral attacks of the body going through an upgrade. Okay? But, it, but, but that's the thing is we're in a storyline. Okay, and so we, we and I'm developing a new storyline and then you guys can develop another storyline. But that would mean that you'd have to release all the programming, the B cell memories. And so then when I'm talking about, you know, Down syndrome and autism, hold on a second. Here, Shuggy, come over here, sugar. Sugar, come over here, Shuggy. You know, autism and, 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 uh, and, and, uh, down syndrome and the B cell memories, you know, when you have, if you don't have enough memories, then your body just, then your body kind of goes into kind of weird, weird things that go on cognitively. You're not completely up to the level of, of society. And so when you lack memories, it's like, it's like being, it's like you don't have the capacity to build on top of, of prototypical information. When you lack B cell memories. And so, and so when someone is really smart, like a type A and type B, because they have not only the surface marker antigen T that has been programmed to do stuff, but they also have a continuous stream of B cell memories, which then makes them extremely smart and potentially puny in the body. I don't say puny, but 
that their their immune system, which is the memories, their central processing unit, their lymphatic system, is constantly streaming so many different uh, B cell memories. But there's also conflicting programming. So you can have so many B cell memories that you have such a, a, a matrix of diverse um, memories that sometimes are not aligned with each other and they start fighting with each other. And, and so you can work with a bunch of memories and be really smart and, and do well in school and, and go into your job and be awesome in your job. And then the body starts breaking down from the amount of work that your lymphatic system is undergoing through the T cell and the B cell, the surface marker antigen that makes up your blood type. And so then the body starts breaking down and people get neurological diseases because of the amount of, of action that the lymphatic system is pumping out. And so then the type O's are the ones that don't have the surface marker antigen because they released all that programming, but they still have the B cell memories from things they pick up along the way. And so this is why then also the, the, the type O's can have issues if they don't start releasing the excess memories. And so when, when, so when you have autism and Down syndrome, you, have, you don't have enough memories to keep the body up to a certain level. And when you have so many memories, then you have the, the body starts glitching and then other things happen when you have too many memories. And then when people have, you know, weird flashbacks of the past, like they said, oh, I used to be, you know, from the city of Atlantis. I used to be from the Greek, you know, pantheon and all that. Those are all stories too. The Sumerian pantheon, the Greek pantheon, all the Adam and Eve stuff. It's all stories, okay? And so then, so then you're like, wow, everything's a story. I just lost my train of thought there. <laughs> But then you have all those stories of the group. Yeah. And so then you, people take part in those, in, t take part in those stories and they become those stories. But, but the, the, the thing, you know, is, is that you want to have a certain amount of memory. That's right. The B cell memories where you're thinking that you were part of the Greek pantheon, the Sumerian pantheon or whatever. But in reality, you have the memories that were passed down genetic lines from probably, yeah, your predecessors for the every generational uh, reproduction and dying. But, but it's not like, you know, but, but you like, but, since they didn't do it right, you're the one now starting over again, but you're repeating the same mistakes as your generations ago. And so that's what happens when people keep dying and reproducing is they keep reproducing the same stuff and they may have memories of past stuff, but it's, but it's not really doing anything for them. It's still working against them. And so you can have the knowledge of the past without the past running you and causing you to self-destruct and end up like your predecessors in the grave. And so, you know, so then you realize that your central processing unit is your lymphatic system and it holds all the stories slash the programming. I knew I heard, I saw lightning because I, oh God, I better, I don't know. And so you guys got to realize that the, we're living in such a simulation. And the, the way with the whole JJ meta mentality, which is so amazing, is that you start releasing the programming, all the stories. But you do too much of the J juice or any other detox, then you get stuck and you get stayed and you don't you don't offer anything new to the table. And so that's when then the you know family and friends and politics, religion, and science keep people reinforced in the story. So even though they're they're on the J juice, they've done so much of it that it now cured them in the in the state of their mind and the state of their stories, and they're not bringing anything new to the table because they have not dealt with the 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 power of the pain. And so now you're just like, so then what? So then you, then, you know, so then what's next? Well, then you write, you write yourself, you start developing your vocabulary and start writing the story that you want to see. And it could be with your family, but remember your family has their own programming because you want to see your husband or your wife or your, or your kids to do this, this, and this doesn't mean that they're going to be on board with you. So instead of writing a story about, of, of what you want to see in your family, why don't you write a story about yourself and how you want to then get to a certain point that, that you want to now identify as Jessica this, and I am going to be dropping seeds and I am going to be the person who's going to, who's going to do this, this, and this, and I'm going to finally face this, this, and this, and I'm finally going to release all of this, this, and this. And then you have redirected the story. That's why I have so many awakenings because not only do I go on Facebook Live and I have unfettered speech, but I also write. I also edify myself and write. And then I also look up information. I understand all the stories out there because if you don't understand all the stories, and that means other arguments. 
If you're taking one side in an activist point of view, then you're taking a biased side. You're not getting all the information. You're getting only half the information because you have purposely not understood the other story, the other argument, the other programming. Because both for and against anything, both Democrat and Republican are both built on stories. And you have to understand the stories behind your politicians. You have to understand the stories behind your government. You have to understand the stories behind the, the, the history of your community, the history of your country, the history of the world that's out there. And then be like, well, I really question or, you know, th this is just a looping and it's just the same stuff repackaged in a different way. I can appreciate the storylines. You know, Genghis Khan, beautiful storyline. Not really, because he was a pillager and raper and he's all trying to take over and all this stuff and kill people. But, but there's so many of those characters in all the historical stories. And they keep repeating, look, we're in it again. We're, look, at, they're thinking about Poland's going to get invaded again by, you know, it's going to be invaded now, it's being invaded by Russia. Ukraine's already been invaded yet once again. So these storylines keep being repeated. And the same thing with the movies, the same thing with the clothing, the same thing with all the different drugs and psychedelics. It's all, it's nothing is new under the sun. But yeah, there are, there are generations that understand this, but they still keep dying and reproducing. My mom goes, when I told her about the, the seminar course I took in San Francisco when I was 19, that gave me aspects of this. She's like, I don't even want to hear it because I already know about it. I was raised in the freaking 60s. I mean, I was raised in the 50s. Born in the 40s, raised in the 50s and 60s. I've seen it all. Jillian, you haven't brought anything new to the table. Well, no shit. Well, if that's the case, then what the hell are you doing teaching me the same shit? And I'm going to end up at the same way. Oh, but your genetics are different because we're not related. Not necessarily. When you practice the same antibiotic practices and taking out organs, doing all this other stuff, you know, the outcome is going to be the same. When you're on a string of prescription drugs or different remedies, the outcome is going to be the same. And so when it's new to me, I'm just like, wow, what's the possibility? But then even then those courses that I took kept me very limited because they don't tell you everything. Of course not. You're, you're paying for a certain amount of information because they want you to go and do your job. They want you to go and, and, and rebuild relationships that weren't working anymore. And then you have some freedom that you don't have to, you know, take somebody back or you can, deal with whatever situation that you have to deal with and rationalize why you're staying in a situation that's not good for you. And, and that's, you know, all the different ways that different corporations have used this information to keep people stuck, keep people stay, keep people under control. And so, yeah, so the, the real, well, the way in which you rise above all this is you understand all the storylines. And that means understanding all the other arguments out there and then develop a new storyline. You can work off of my storyline. And then who knows what kind of things you're developing. And then you are also producing new neural pathways. You are building worlds as you speak, write, and verbalize. But then what happens, see, with some of these courses that are like the self-help courses and stuff, you can superficially get someone to say, oh, wow, that's amazing. That's so cool. But biochemically, they're still heavily programmed. And... Their associations with family, friends, and political, religious affiliations have then lured them back into the same programming. And so then the courses wear off because people are still stuck in their own biochemical programming and they're still within their the influences of their peers. And so the people have to go back to, to the same course and go, like, I got to go get a re-up, re you know, I got to go get in, what do you call it, uh re-uploaded with the same information to remind me that I, uh, that, 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 that I have to do this and this. And that's the thing with, with these courses out there, these self-help courses. They're very temporary. They're like a cure. Every course out there that self-help, every single remedy, that every single lawyer that you go to, every single thing in the justice system is just a cure. It's temporary. It doesn't get to the root cause. And people are then stuck with the same issue that they came in with. And they only had a temporary stay of execution but in reality they're stuck with this program until they actually go and physically biophysically release those b cell t cell memories and then develop new memories develop new neural pathways or you can be a clone and regurgitate 
This is like, was it mimic, regurgitate, and innovate? And now I say do all three. Some people get stuck in just mimicking and regurgitating, but they cannot innovate for the life of them because they don't have the capacity to. Their biochemistry won't let them because they're afraid of salt or they're doing so much salt and water that they've cured themselves so they can't possibly take on any new information. And so, yeah, so then they're stuck regurgitating, you know, uh, and mimicking somebody else, following or um, worshiping. I don't want anybody to worship me, okay? But, you know, the whole worshiping and demonizing a person, place, or thing, or element, or protein, that's all part of the storylines. That's the main storylines out there in politics, religion, and science, is the worshiping of something or the demonization of something. And it's a binary argument. And then you think about the Freemason checkerboard, the black and the white. Then I'm thinking, like, if you add color to the black and the white, well, if you add color to the black, it's just black. It just stays black it's because, you know, the color is going to be absorbed by the black. Then you have the white. The white takes on the color. And then it depends on how much color is put on the white will turn that color. So every story line out there has the black and white Freemason checkerboard because they're saying that, yeah, it's either we're going to absorb you in the story and, and, and take you away from your story or you're going to take on the story. You will be the story. And every single time that, that, that we have white and we're going to give you a storyline, we're going to give you a character, you're going to take that character on. And so if we, if we, if we, if you are a white, just pretend that you're all white and they, and they drop pink food coloring on you, you're going to turn into that, into that archetype. You'll be pink until they give you another color. And so that color wears off and then you go, oh, we're going to put blue on you now. Now you're blue and you'll take on the blue character. And when that wears off, then there's purple. And I'll tell you, there's so many, there's primary colors and there's tertiary colors. And people take on the storylines as if they're taking on freaking food coloring of primary colors and tertiary colors. And they don't ever realize that they have been controlled and programmed. Like seriously. And when you finally step out of the storylines out there and then you watch your Facebook and you watch people keep looping in the same storyline, you're like, oh my God, this is the world that I live in. This is what I took part in. And then you get mad because then you see people self-destructing because they're to believe in the storylines around the cannabis, the chemo, the radiation, all the different antibiotics, the holistic allopathic doctors, nurses, all the different archetypes, the sexy people. The mad people, the activists, the ones that are all promoting crypto, their jobs, you know, they're taking on the, the characteristics of their jobs and they can't separate between, you know, and that, that, and then you're like, oh my God, what the hell? And so that's when you actually wake up is when you finally let go of your politics, your religion and your scientific dogmas. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> many can't do that. Many cannot do it because they're still stuck. They have so many T cells. They've been programmed so heavily. And that's why those that are type A or type B or have so many predispositions, like so many of them, and they're in the politics, religion, and science world, like heavily into it, they'll do so much JJ's that they'll cure themselves in the same state that they're in. They won't have anything new to offer to the table. They won't. Because the pain is so great to finally release all that programming that they... They're trying to stop it because it's just so great. And so when you get into that into that mode of trying to stop the pain, then you're going to be cured in that storyline because your genetics are a storyline reinforced by all of your associations. And so that's why I've let a lot of people go because I know how heavily programmed people are into their storylines. That's why I work alone. Because I recognize that people were not evolving around me. They say they were. They're like, oh yeah, but then they, then they, they, they were, you know, either not taking, you know, certain suggestions, or they were so heavily into their religion, whatever it was, or they were challenging me at every turn, trying to say, well, I have something to contribute. Why can't you listen to me? I have, I, have, I can teach you something. If you're going to teach me something, no, it's not that. Way. This is not a quid pro quo. We're not partners in this shit. I developed the Jilly Juice. 
yeah, it's my way or no way, but they hate. Have you been able to articulate a different thought process besides the same one of, of biohacking or horoscopes or Jesus and the Bible or Trump lovers or the Biden lovers and all that? Can you, can you offer a different perspective besides that, you know, you should never go against your family and friends, your family and blood is everything? Yeah. And so when I'm able to relinquish myself from all of those influences, and then I know that I'm with my husband, he has his own programming, I can deal with his programming. But when I have other people that try to take over my household or try to impose their way into my world, no fucking way. Because I know how the world works. And then I have the safety of boundaries that I've drawn for safety. But that's the thing is that you have to recognize the world that you live in and figure out what you can actually handle. And the more you have people who are so influential in your life, the more you're going to assimilate to them more than them assimilating to you. Because guess who they have? They have the whole fucking world in their back pocket. And what do you have? A little idea that is not super influential unless you make it influential by releasing all those influences. And that's the inverse square law. The closer you are to influential energy, the more you're going to assimilate to that influential energy. And so when you are surrounded by people stuck in the storylines out there and you have put yourself in groups that are stuck in a storyline, you are being actively influenced by that storyline. And you don't even know it because you're in it. When you take yourself out of it, then you realize it, but you have to have the strength to take yourself out of the storylines out there. Many people can't take themselves out of storylines because that is their, that, that's their livelihood. They are now part of the story that they cannot take themselves out of that story and still live. People take themselves out of the story by self-destructing. But that's not the point of the whole religious meta mentality is that you take yourself out of the storyline and still survive. So it's quite interesting what's going on out there. But now, you know, I have more, I have more clarity as far as my book. I have more clarity on what is going on with storylines and it's programming. It's all, and, and then yeah, family and friends and association and belief systems are all storylines. And so then you, then now you know why I have finally decided to work alone. Because I do, I, I have been working around people who are stuck in their story. Not only their personal genetic story, but also their family, medical, and political stories, and religious stories, and spiritual stories. And you see it all over their Facebook, you see it in their photographs, you see it in a lot of things. And I, and I, I you know, diversity is you're able to go work both sides of the brain, you're able to understand the storylines out there, and articulate them, and understand them, and also be like, hey, uh, that's not my storyline. And... How do you develop a new storyline when that's all you have is the other storylines out there? Well, just say, you know, you know what I do? I get up every day. I blow my nose. I know how aggressive these viruses are. I know how dangerous it is out there mixing in with so many different people who are, on, who are unhinged. And I'm just finding find a way to survive all this and go along with whatever storyline that's been set out called the overarching mission statement called the Georgia Guidestones. And I'm not the one that wrote that story. I'm not even the one that's even conducting how that story is going to manifest. But I'm going to actively try to survive this storyline. And when that storyline changes in the next however many years, then I'll assimilate to that storyline. And that's the storyline that I'm going to stick to. But I have to recognize the storyline that I'm under first. And some of you don't even recognize the storyline that you're under. Because you're in it. You haven't figured out how to take yourself out of it because it's, it's part of you until you release it, not cure it. And that's the dangers of cures, is people get cured in their storyline. And Julie just can be a cure. <laughs> and that is the Julie Juice Meta Mentality. That's the power of salt water and eating food and dealing with pain and staying home and staying safe. 
and feeding your brain new and different information to then produce and create new worlds called neural pathways and then worlds open up to you because you are developing the world with all of the constituents like ingredients at your disposal, putting together things, taking them apart, putting together, taking apart. And then you become the architect and engineer of your life under an overarching storyline that you can survive and, be, and you're given the choice to survive with an infrastructure that is balanced. And then you'll be the one to then destroy yourself or you'll be the one to survive all this. But it's very easy to get stuck in the storylines. Very easy. All right, bye.